Welcome back to the classroom. My name is Mr. Wong. Today we're going to be covering module four, electricity and magnetism, focusing on electric circuits, and we're going to be looking at this specific law. Uh, I think you pronounce it a Kirchhoff's law. Um, so this will be quite a long recording just to get to the specific um, details. Uh, so this might have to be split up into uh, multiple videos as well, just so. It uh, doesn't lag on to one extended video. What we're going to be focusing on firstly is the difference between series and parallel circuits. Um, then we'll talk about what um, this person's law states, and then we'll also look at using those calculations, those uh, mathematical principles, um, how that applies in terms of voltage, current, and resistance of that particular circuit. Your textbook reference today is the following here. Um, so have a look at that. Okay, so the first question we're going to look into is um, what um, what diagrams demonstrate uh, series only, which ones only demonstrate parallel only, and which ones demonstrate both series and parallel circuits. Uh, I'll let you quickly pause the video here um, to consider which one is which. Now, before I get into exactly how uh, or which diagram is parallel, which diagram is in series, I'm going to firstly show you a little change in the structure. So I'm going to use a computer simulator to show you the difference between series and parallel first, and then you can go back if you're not sure. Okay, with a bit of magic transition, you can see I've created two different types of circuits. Uh, on the left hand side this is a series circuit, on the right hand side we have is a parallel circuit. As a matter of fact, just to illustrate a little bit better, I might put a second light bulb here to demonstrate the two. Okay, so here we go. On the left hand side of our series circuit you can see that the movement of the electrons appear to be slower. Uh, in comparison to the electrons when we have our series circuit. I just want to note one thing, the resistance of the light bulbs are exactly the same and the voltage of the battery is exactly the same. So that's just to give you a direct comparison. We can see here with a series circuit we can form basically a whole loop. If you look at our parallel circuit uh, we can actually draw out two loops. So from the battery, I can draw one loop around from this light bulb here, or I can draw one loop around this light bulb all the way back here. So if we want to create a electric circuit, firstly, the wires need to be connected into a loop. Then the second point we need to factor in is um, if all the different loads, so all the different resistors, uh, light bulbs, if all of them are in the same loop, they are in series to each other. If the if the bulbs or the loads are in uh, opposing loops or in different loops to each other or different pathways, that's probably a lot more clearer to understand. If they're in different pathways to each other, then we are looking at a parallel circuit. Okay, so let's look at the different ones and let's look at which one is parallel, which one is series, and which one is a bit of both. So I'm just going to draw it out. So for the first one here we have these two that are parallel to each other, but these two are in series to each other. So we have both here. This one we can draw the one loop, so that's in series. This one, if you actually have a look, we actually can form two loops around. So this one is actually parallel. This one is in series. This one is in parallel. Series and series there. Okay, so that kind of gives you an understanding of the difference. Now, when it comes to measurement of an electric circuit, there are two ways we can measure it. So one is to use an ammeter. Uh, an ammeter is placed in series uh, to a circuit, and remember, it is used to measure the overall current. Uh, when we say we want to measure the overall current, we want to measure how many charges are passing through a given period of time. 
the voltmeter is placed parallel um, to any circuit we want to look at uh, the voltage on. Remember, voltage is uh, the change in potential. So we're looking at the amount of energy used to move a charge from one end to another. So it could be uh, from here to here, how much energy has been used up. Okay, so the next part of this uh, analysis is describe the use of label diagrams, points here, where you would connect the ammeter to measure the current flowing through the circuit. Okay, so if I want to know exactly what the current is uh, for my series circuit, for R1, R2, R3, uh, think about it very carefully. The actual answer to this is actually very straightforward. Um, it's actually anywhere in the circuit. So anywhere in the circuit will be an appropriate position to measure out the current for this example here. Um, because what's actually happening, remember current is just the flow of charged particles. Now, no matter where I look in this circuit here, the flow of the electrons will be exactly the same. Okay. If you actually look at what we did with our series circuit here, the flow of the electrons is consistent everywhere we go. So no matter where I put my ammeter, I'll find that the flow of the electrons or the current, or the electric current to be exact, will be the same throughout. So if I have my ammeter, I'll measure here, 0.45, move it on my battery, 0 0.45, 0 0.45. So that's demonstrating uh, that no matter where I go on my uh, series circuit, I would still have the same amount of current. And then obviously it comes to interpreting uh, circuit diagrams. So you can see all these little symbols um, that depict a basic circuit diagram. So it is to your understanding uh, to know how to draw these and also know how to interpret uh, what information is being given to you by these here. So let's just quickly do a couple of quick circuit diagrams. So it says a battery is connected in series with a light bulb, a resistor, and an ammeter. Now, if you look at the chart that was given to you in the last slide, um, a battery cell has two lines, okay? A normal cell just has one. So I'm gonna draw this out. I'm gonna do my battery cell here, like so. It is in series with a light bulb, so that's my light bulb there, with our resistor, which is this sort of zigzaggy line, and then an ammeter. It doesn't really matter where the ammeter is for this particular question, so it's just like that. The next one, it says, draw a circuit diagram for the circuit shown below. Note that the voltmeter is not in series um, with other components in this circuit. So this is our circuit here doesn't actually have a voltmeter, but it um, doesn't matter. So we have our battery source here. Now, this part of the battery uh, is actually the positive part, so that's where the longer hand should go. And then we have drawn here, we have one light bulb, we have an ammeter, another bulb goes back, we have an ammeter here, and then we have an ammeter here, and a bulb here, and I draw it like so. Okay, so that's how you draw this component of the graph, or of the electric circuit diagram. We talked about an idea of how charged particles work, how do you charge up a particular circuit, so we know that uh, in terms of conservation law of charge, the total number of electric charge in an isolated system uh, never changes. What we mean by an isolated system is a place where um, energy and mass cannot, dis uh, cannot be removed. So energy and mass uh, cannot be interchanged. or interchange with its surroundings.
okay? Uh, in terms of the net quantity of the charge, that means it's zero. So the amount of charge, let's say the sum of the charges before will equal to the sum of the charges after. That's the idea we have here. So if I rub a balloon onto a woolen jumper, um, the amount of charge these two have together will be the same overall as what we had originally here. So nothing will change in terms of the charge quantities. Another thing we talk about is the law of conservation uh, of energy in electric circuits. So in an electric circuit, energy can't be created or destroyed. Uh, it has to be either transferred into something else, transferred from one object to another, or it's transformed. In the case here, we have electrical energy that can be transferred into light and also into heat if we have short circuiting or we're using these old filament light bulbs. So that's what we're seeing in electric circuits. We get to a person called uh, Kirchhoff, uh, and he created uh, and he established two types of laws uh, in terms of current and voltage. So he basically said at any juncture in an electric circuit, the total sum of all the currents uh, is equal to zero. So uh, if I added all the components together, uh, the total sum flowing out of the junction is zero uh, based on the law of conservation of energy. So energy cannot disappear from the circuit. It's just transformed. And same idea for voltage. So the sum of all the voltages in a closed circuit must be equal to zero. And that's what he essentially said. All right, so what we are going to look into is uh, the series circuits of Kirchhoff's law. Again, this is where I'll stop the video just so um, you get a nice separation between the series circuits and the parallel circuits. This video is really essentially just getting you uh, comfortable with the idea of the difference between series and parallel circuits. So hop on to the next video and I'll see you there.